Bola year 10. So this is our last lesson in our free time series. You've just done an Oak Academy lesson to just recap a lot of the uh, or three of the tenses and so we're going to recap the future tense now in context of free time and look at one other aspect of our free time or entertainment and leisure topic before we put it all together in our conversation questions. So if you want to put today's date and the title in either your books or online wherever you've decided to work so if you're doing it in your book that's great just, just take some photos of anything that I need to check over and um, if you're doing it online, just make sure you are going to get that stuff printed um, for your books, OK? You don't necessarily need to send everything to me. It's good for me to see how you're getting on. But obviously, things that need to be marked, like writing, I definitely do need to see, OK? Um, so if we jump straight in then with revising the future tense, we did this a couple of weeks before Christmas. We only did one lesson on it, so it's likely that we'll have forgotten a bit or all of it. That's OK. So when we're talking about the future, we might say something like este fin de semana, this end of week, literally, to say this weekend. Then we use voy, which is I am going. Then a for the two plus the infinitive verb. So remember, the infinitive is the verb that will have the AR, the ER, or the IR on the end. So basically has that meaning of two. So although it kind of sounds like you're going to repeat the two, I am going to, to listen, whatever it is, it's really important to make sure it's in the infinitive because it's something that is going to happen and that you also have this A. Without the A, it isn't future. So you've got to have boya and then the infinitive to complete the future tense, okay? A little bit like maths, one and two makes three, one and one doesn't make three, you have to have all three pieces, okay? Think of it a little, little like that way. So for example, voy a escuchar música, I am going to listen to, or listen to, this means music. Voy a bailar, I am going to dance. So even though it's me who's going to dance, I don't say boy at by law, because by law remembering I dance, because it's the I ending, because that would mean I am going to I dance. That's why we have the infinitive. And I think I mentioned before that with the past and present tenses, our lives are shorter. So we shorten the infinitive verb. We take the ending off. In the future, our lives are longer. So we want to keep it longer. We keep the infinitive whole. OK, so let's see if we can spot the future tense in these. You don't need to write anything down unless you want to, just for extra practice, write these sentences down. You simply need to say if it's rojo, red, amarillo, yellow, or verde, green. Or you could write down if you want to keep a track of which ones you've got right, red, yellow, or green, or rojo, amarillo, or verde. So which one is I am going to watch TV? So pause, have a think about it, and pause when you're ready. So it is rojo, voy a ver la televisión. If you pick this one, it's I'm going to listen to the TV. And this one just says I'm going to the TV. Doesn't make any sense there, okay? Next one, I am going to play football. Pause and then unpause when you're ready to check. So we should have voy a jugar al fútbol. This does mean I'm going to play as well. But basketball, I am going to see football. So all three were correct future sentences but not the right translation. I am going to do my homework. Pause and then when you're ready, unpause. So we should have voy a hacer mis deberes, rojo. I am going to go out with my friends. So hopefully you picked green. Voy a salir con mis amigos, verde. If you pick this one, it's going to go out with my family. And remember this tocar means to play with an instrument, to play guitar. I'm going to surf the internet. So there's our pattern, Amarillo. I am going to, to surf the internet. This would be the present tense, I surf the internet. I'm going to sleep. So sleepir is not a verb, it is uh, rojo, voy a dormir, I'm going to sleep. So we hopefully can recognise that pattern of boy, a ah, plus the infinitive, OK? You have the grammar of this written out in your grammar books, so you don't need to write this out again. Of course, if you want to, it's going to help it stick in your heads better, but it's not compulsory, OK? So just to recap, 
To say what we're going to do, we use a form of ir, which means to go, followed by a, followed by the infinitive. It's what we call the near future tense. We, we're going to learn later on another kind of future, which is the distant future, things that are going to happen more distantly, okay? So we use ir plus a plus the infinitive, and the different parts of ir are boy for I am going to, bas for you are going to, ba for he, she or it is going to, bamos for we are going, bais for you are going to a group of people, and ban for they are going. Okay, so for example, if I was going to say he is going to play football, I say ba a jugar al fútbol. We are going to go out, vamos a salir. They are going to listen to music, van a escuchar música. Uh, you are going to go shopping, vas a ir de compras, and so on. Okay, so if you want to make a note of the different parts of ir again, you can. But like I said, they are in your grammar book. And you did a little quiz on this before Christmas, which you might want to go back and try again or do if you haven't completed it. It's in the free time section on GCSE Spanish, okay? So, just jump on here. So let's put together some sentences now then. So, este fin de semana, this weekend, how would you say, I am going to play tennis? So pause this video now and write down what the answer would be. Okay, so hopefully we've got the boy a jugar, I'm going to play, and you might have needed to look back in your healthy living topic if you've forgotten tennis. And remember when we're saying play with a sport, sport, it's always jugar al. Boy a jugar al tenis. Next one then, pause and write down, I am going to play video games. So you're gonna need to go back to our free time work in your books to find that. Or if you don't have it with you, you could look it up online, but not the whole sentence. <laughs> okay, so we should be ready to check then. So check these in a different colour so I can see how you got on. So voy a jugar con los videojuegos. I'm going to play with video games. Or you could say another way around it could be voy a jugar con mi PlayStation, Xbox, wherever it is. Okay, how would you say I'm going to go shopping? So I am going to the verb to go, which is only two letters, and then shopping is the something. So unpause when you're ready. So we should have boy a ir de compras. I am going to go shopping. This time I want you to use they. So if you need to flick back in the slides in the PowerPoint below this video or in the video itself to or look back in your book, we're not going to say boy a, because that'd be I am going to. How would you say they are going to go out with friends or out with their friends, if you know the word for they are? So unpause when ready. So van a salir, instead of voy a salir, they are going to go out with friends, van a salir con amigos, or you could say con sus amigos for their friends. Okay, how would you say I'm going to sleep? So who remembers that verb to sleep from our healthy living topic and earlier on? So voy a dormir, bien. This time I want you to say we. So we are going to this, to go. Sorry, we are going to go to the cinema. We've got to have that verb in the middle. We are going to go to the cinema. Or you could say we are going to watch films. So unpause when you're ready. Okay, so we should have vamos a ir al cine. So when we say to the with a masculine thing, a plus el becomes al. If you'd said we're going to watch films, it could be vamos a ver, V-E-R, películas is the word for films, okay? Okay, he is going to uh, ride a horse. Now, we haven't done this much, so maybe you can find it when we did um, sports or healthy living or something like that. Um, or like I said, you could just... Just look up on word reference, ride a horse, or on Google, but not the whole sentence. Okay, so we should be ready to check. If we've unpaused, it should be ba, a. Now, if you did ride a horse, it would be montar en caballo. So, M-O-N-T-A-R, en caballo, C-A-B-A-L-L-O. Or you could have just done it much simpler and said he is going to do horse riding. Ba a practicar la equitación. Okay, so here's just a few phrases you could be using. 
um, when you come to write about your free time. So you're going to use boya, I'm going to. Here's a very a variety of verbs and activities. So what I want you to do is just pause the video here and write down any vocabulary there that you still don't know or has been new for you today that you need to make a note of in the Spanish and English. I'll put the English up shortly. So write down the Spanish of any you do not know there or that was new for you today. And then unpause when you're ready for the English to add that to your books and check. Okay, so here's all the English. So if you did not know with video games or going shopping is ir de compras and so on, write those down. So these three go with jugar, these two go with practicar, these two go with ir and so on. Okay, so make sure you've got a good bank of vocabulary um, there in your books of things you uh, were new or had forgotten, ready for writing about your own free time. Okay, so what you're going to do now is you're going to write a small paragraph to say what you're going to do this weekend, okay? Try and include at least three activities you are going to do and give an opinion on each one. You could say something somebody else is going to do and make sure you give a reason. So if you say, uh, let's go back up here, this weekend, este fin de semana, I am going to, now obviously, we're very limited what we can do at the moment in lockdown, so it doesn't have to be true, okay? Um, it could be what you actually would really like to do, but we're going to pretend we're going to do it. So, este fin de semana voy a ir al cine. I'm going to go to the cinema. Then I might say, me chifla el cine. I'm mad about the cinema. But I need to make sure I then give a reason. Por qué me interesa, I'm interested in las películas de acción, in action films, or something like that. Okay? So, three things you're going to do. Try and say something somebody else is going to do or as part of this, it could be I'm going to go with somebody and we are going to something. Try and make it flow with rather than bullet points, like saying after that or in primero, firstly. Um, give some uh, opposite opinions with however and so on. Okay, so pause and take as long as you need to write this. Um, and then when you're ready, we're going to move on to one final topic of free time. Okay, so I will mark those and you're also going to use those shortly in your conversation booklets. But first of all, we're going to just look at El Cine because one part of talking about um, free time is that maybe you watch a lot of films or TV. So we're going to look at what it, uh, films we like and dislike, so opinions and adjectives on films and types of films. First of all, though, we're going to mainly have a look at this verb ver here. Um, and see if we can spot which tense all of these are here. So ber means to watch. So most of these, or half of these, we have done before. So we have that we know I watch. We've seen it in the past tense, the preterite. We've done it in the imperfect tense. We've done the imperfect. We know the I am going to. You might be able to work out I really want to because it's something else in the present tense. So then I have watched and I will watch are less common. You might recognise I would watch because we know I would like and it's going to have the same ending. So what I want you to do is write down the English, I watch, I saw, I used to watch and so on, and see how many of the correct forms of to watch, what you can get in the right place. Okay, after you've had a couple of minutes on your own, I'll give you some clues. Okay, so you've either completely finished and you know you're comfortable, ready to go over these, or you need a little bit more help so as we go through them. So if we skim over here, now I know the present tense is not going to be in the infinitive. I need to take off the infinitive, and when I verbs always end in O. So I was looking down here, I can see this one and this one end in O. But two watch is ber, so simply taking off the end and adding O, the closest to it is be. okay? Then I used to watch, we come to this one first, I know that imperfect tenses, when we have that word used to, either has aba or ia. This is an ia verb, so it's going to have that ia ending. Well, I can see one there with ia and another one there with ia. This is still in the infinitive, it's still got the r, so it's something that's happening in the future. Therefore, it's the one in the past, if in the past we take away the infinitive. So be ia, I used to watch. Coming back to the other past tense, which we haven't done so commonly, that is taking off the ending as well. So what other verb in here? 
would you take the ending off? So this has got the infinitive. This looks very uncommon. Haven't seen this before. This has still got the infinitive. So has this. So the only one left then is B. So hopefully we can work out those first three. I have watched is a tense we haven't learned yet. I would watch. What's I would like? Hopefully you remember it's me gustaría. So find the one that has that ber with the ia, like gustar with ia. I am going to watch. Hopefully we are confident with that one now because we've just been learning it. Boy, a, and then to watch. Okay, which should leave you then with I have watched, I will watch, and I really want to watch. You might be able to work these out because we've got um, I will watch is a future, so it's going to have the infinitive in it. And then I really want to is longer than I have watched. So you might be able to work that out by process of elimination. So let's have a look. So one is C, like we said, Beo, I watch. Two is H, I saw, B. I used to watch, Beia. Four is A, B, Sto, I have watched. So tense we, will, we are going to learn later on. Five is Beria. Like, me gustaría, I would like to watch. But I would like, sorry, and then Betty, I would watch. Six is D. This is in the future, so I've still got, I've got the infinitive. I haven't taken the ending off it. Seven is F. I am going to, so I am going to watch. And finally, I really want to watch Tengo ganas de ver. So you might use some of these in today's lesson. And it's just a little recap of the tenses we have done. Okay, let's first of all look at describing films and then we'll look at types of films. So what I'd like you to do is wherever you're working, put the subtitle adjetivos para describir las películas. So adjectives to describe films. And then I've given you a few adjectives here that are, uh, there's one or two cognates, but mainly new words or non-cognates so that we can make sure we are getting away from using the same words people always use to describe things like divertido, fun and aburrido, boring, and getting into varying our adjectives. So create two columns, positivo and negativo, and see how many of those you reckon you can guess are either positive or negative and the English for. So pause, do as many as you can, and then there are quite a few new ones and non-cognates there, so I'll check the rest then when you're ready to unpause. Okay, so the positives then, animado, which means lively, then over here, monotono is monotonous, or in other words, another word for boring, something that is always the same. Infantil looks a bit like infant, child, so that means childish. Alegre, if you play music, you might have noticed that uh, sometimes comes at the start of a music piece, it means happy or cheerful. Tonto is a bit stupid, okay, or silly. Emocionante, exciting, it doesn't mean emotional, so be careful with that word. Gratioso is another word for fun or funny instead of divertido. Deprimente, depressing. And then inteligente, intelligent. Okay, so although that is a cognate there, it's quite an interesting word to use to describe a film. So rather than just saying a film is interesting, saying that it is an, it's an intelligent film makes you think is a nice way of using that word. Okay. Here's a few more adjectives then, some things that are more cognates here. So we're building up our vocabulary. So what you can do is add these by matching the Spanish to the English. You can add them into the right columns that you were just writing. So misterioso looks a lot like mysterious. So you can write that into the positive column. So pause again and then unpause when you're ready to check these. So I'll just go over the translations and you hopefully have put them whether they're positive or negative. So you've got mysterious, bonito is beautiful, original is how we'd say this word, okay, not original. Fascinante, so let's try that one, fascinante, fascinante, fascinating. Raro or extraño, so if something is rare, it's not very common, is it? It's quite strange. Emotivo, so that's the word for emotional, it's emotive, okay, it brings emotions in you. Magico. Try that word, not ma magical, magical. Let's try and roll our R's or extend this if we can. Terrorifico. And again, terrorifico. So that's why I put my emphasis. Ifico. Or terrifying. It doesn't mean terrific. Sorprendente. is surprising. 
impresionante. That is amazing. It's like another way of saying it's impressive. Triste, or probably know from the Welsh, it means sad. And feliz, or is another way of saying happy, like alegre. Okay, so we've got lots of vocabulary there we can use for describing films or TV programs. So let's have a look at some tipos de película. Now this can also apply to tipos de programa. Okay, for when we're talking about TV programs, so programa is just P-R-O-G-R-A-M-M-A. But um, we'll come on to that again later. So they're basically the same words. Um, we would just change películas for programas. So if I like action films, they are las películas de acción. If I like action programs, las programas de acción. Okay, don't need to write any down yet. I'm going to give you a full list at the end. Let's just practice the pronunciation. So we'll repetir, repeat, las películas de acción. Muy bien. And then romantic films are las películas de amor. So in other words, films of love is what they say. Las películas de suspense. So let's try that again. Las películas de suspense. So suspense films, we would call them thrillers. Okay, things that keep you on the edge of your seat. Horror films. Las películas de terror. So we had that word before, terrorífico. Now we're using the word terror, horror, or terror. Las pelicula, películas de terror. Then science fiction, las películas de ciencia ficción. So lots of thuz in that. Let's break it up. Las películas de ciencia ficción. Ficción. Ciencia ficción. Okay. War films, las películas de guerra. So in all of these, I hope you are noticing that we don't say war films, las guerras películas. Remember, you can't put two nouns together, can't say flower pot or anything like that. We have to say pot of flowers, films of war and so on. Okay. Western films, so cowboys, las películas del oeste. So when you say this slowly, o este, sort of, and then when you say it fast, it just comes out as oeste. Sounds like you're saying oeste. Okay, let's try that. Las películas del oeste. Okay, martial arts films. Las películas de artes marciales. Com comedies. Las comedias. Las comedias. So hopefully you're practicing those. Uh, Western films or adventure, so we've done Western films, adventure films, this is also a type of Western. Las películas de aventuras. So this is aventuras. Aventuras. Y los dibujos animados. So in other words, animated drawings. Los dibujos animados. Okay, so there's the full list. So again, write tipos de película, write the Spanish. This is our last list of vocabulary today. And write down the English you remember when you're ready to check the English and pause, okay? Okay, make sure you have included the accent on películas because it tells me I need to pronounce it películas and not películas, okay? Right. Let's just put those together um, in some translations. So what I'd like you to do is to write down the Spanish for these. If you want to write the English, you have it to revise from, then you can, okay? Um, or you take a screenshot of this if you're working on the computer. So write, pause, uh, pause and then take as long as you need to work these out. Okay, now, before we check them, I'm going to make a reminder to you about the fact that you are writing about plurals. So when I say I like with something plural, there is something I need to do to me gusta. Because what really you are saying is horror films, they please me. So me gusta, I need to do something to it, las películas de terror, because I'm saying horror films please me, and it's they please me. So go back and look at your 
opinions and check that you have basically made your opinions plural. And the same here. If you have said es, then what you've said is I like horror films because it is exciting, not they are. And therefore, because these are plural, what do I need to do to the word emocionante? Because in Spanish, I need to say I like horror films because they are exciting. OK, so pause and check your plurals before you check your answers again. OK, so here we go, marking another, another colour. So we should have me gustan because it's they please me. Me gustan las películas de horror porque son emocionantes. Eso me no me gustan las películas de amor porque son aburridas. Or you could have used monotonas y tontas. Hopefully you have remembered that because películas are feminine, película ends in an A, my adjectives need to also be feminine. Me encantan las comedias porque son graciosas. Again, comedy is funny, therefore it's graciosa. There's more than one, so graciosas. I really like westerns because they're fun. Me gustan mucho las películas del oeste porque son divertidas. Or you could have used graciosas. Graciosa more has the meaning of funny and divertido more has the meaning of fun. But if you're interchanging them, it's not the end of the world. Then we have me chiflan las películas de acción porque son impresionantes. Okay, fantástico. Right, so what we have now done is finished all of our entertainment and leisure topic. And what you're going to do now to finish off today and it might take you into next week is to complete the answers to your conversation booklet. So do you remember before Christmas, I mentioned that we are almost ready to answer these and we went over in detail question four and I'll come back to it in a second. And this one here about having, if you had more money. And I asked you to start looking at them. So some of you might have done that and I might have already started answering these and that is fantastic. Others of you might still need some more time. Okay, so if you have your conversation booklet with you, then please make sure you either write these in your book or online and then when I mark them that you make sure you write them in the marked version or if you're just writing them straight in for me to mark in your booklets then that's fine too okay so we've got what do you do in your free time so go back to present tense en mi tiempo libre in my free time I listen to music because it's fun my favorite type of music is whatever okay um and then actually that one I didn't mean to overlap it but it kind of overlaps with this one but so what type of music do you like? We haven't gone over this in lots of detail, but like I mentioned before Christmas, music types are the same. So mi tipo de música preferida, o me gusta mucho la música um, rock, la música pop, la música indie, whatever it is, okay? They just use the English names. Uh, do you prefer a good book to a film? So I prefer, prefiero ver una película or prefiero leer un buen libro and why you could give both sides of it here on the one hand I like to watch a film because it's very relaxing um, and you can join you can go with friends however uh, I sometimes like to read a good book to escapar we used that before escape no, um, reality and that sort of thing okay are hobbies important for young people? We'll come on to that one in a second. What did you do last week to relax? We've got, you've got the past tense about free time in your books. You could simply copy a paragraph that we wrote in there. And then what are you going to do next weekend? You've already answered in today's lesson. So again, you could just copy that straight in, okay? What would your ideal weekend be like? So you're gonna take this bit here, fin de semana ideal, and say mi fin de semana ideal, my ideal weekend. Seria would be, so I'll say that again, mi fin de semana ideal seria, my ideal weekend would be, and then whatever it would be, it would be con mis amigos, with my friends, or con mi familia, it would be a la playa, seria a la playa, it would be at the beach, it would be in my house, it would be in the cinema, or you could say para mi fin de semana ideal, for my ideal weekend, I, I would like, me gustaría, and whatever it is. Okay, and then we'll come on to this question here shortly. So as you answer each of these, you might need to rewind the video and listen to my hints of how to answer each one. Um, use everything that's in your book. Please don't just use Google Translate because you're not learning anything 
from uh, it, working it out for you and it often makes mistakes, okay? So I'm gonna just go over again four and eight in a bit more detail like we did before Christmas in case you need some more help there, okay? So when you're writing answering number four, um, we had we had a little go at this before Christmas, but here's all that vocabulary and an example. In my opinion, free time or free uh, hobbies, sorry, are important for young people because it's important to relax. Because so I've used a different word for because there to vary. Life can be stressful because it's always it's very busy. They put the always first, and from time to time, we have too much homework. Okay, so yours might look something like that. And then the final one, if you had more time or money, what would you like to do? So instead of if you had, I would change this to I have, tengo, so si, tenia, sorry, if I had, rather we need to make it the imperfect, si tenia más tiempo o dinero, so you can see there I've taken out the S, me gustaría, I would like. And then... You might like to try. So would you try uh, horse riding? Would you try uh, doing a baking course? I don't know. <laughs> but um, just say something that you would like to try to do or something you might just do more of. OK. And also give your reason why. So in the two hours, then you've hopefully finished the Oak Academy lesson and just uh, sent me some screenshots of how you got on there. And then you've completed all the work on the future tense and cinema. But it which you can send me again in the same ad submission with your screenshots, but it might take you, especially if you didn't do any of this before, um, longer to answer these questions. So if you need more time over the next week and you want to do it then, that's great. Um, otherwise, you might be able to complete some in next week's lesson um, because we have a triple. OK, um, so muy bien, submit everything you've done um, to me at the end of the two hours just so I can mark anything that needs correcting. And just check everybody understands where they're at with their grammar and things. Okay. Buena suerte y adiós. I will see you next week.